<laughs> so this is uh, Annika Aras and I'm here with uh, Christian Hendricks and we're interviewing Erling uh, Alsen. And uh, today is the 20th of June 2014. And maybe to begin with, I, I'd like to ask like, where on the waterfront have you worked and how did you end up working here? It well, I started with my uh, father when I was about probably seven or eight years old. Uh, Gail netting on the freezer. Seven or eight? Yeah, when I first started going with them. Yeah. And by 13, 12 and 13, we had our own gill nets. We used to gill net out of a skiff. Okay. And uh, on our after school and things like that. <laughs> and that was down <laughs> at Annis's Island. Oh, on Annis's side yeah. then. Were and you between living Annis's in? and Queensboro. Okay. So we were there. And uh, we got caught there once by the fishery guys. Because all us <laughs> kids from school, we used to, right after school, we'd run down there and get a net out. And there was probably like about eight or ten nets out. Yeah. And then the fishery officer got a new speedboat and come mm -hmm. and nailed the whole works of us. So when you said <laughs> that, like you had your net, you're talking like yourself had your own net. You're not talking your dad's yeah. net. No, no. That's really cool. It's out of rowboats. Yeah. And then, uh, so we had to go to court. And I remember the one guy, he pleaded not guilty. So anyway, we got fined $10 and 250 costs, so $12.50. Mm -hmm. The other guy, he got $25 fine, 250 costs. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, the judge was the next door neighbor's office here, oh, Cassidy. Really? Okay. That's the descendant of, that's uh, nice. probably his grandkids who run that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, that was one of the things, but... Uh, after that, you know, uh, then I started with uh, my own boat there when I was about 15. Okay. And started fishing around Westminster and up to Douglas Island, you know, about Port Manbridge and stuff. Okay. And, and that and out to the Gulf. We'd go out to Fast East and out to Sandheads. Okay. Fish there. Then we started actually working on tugboats in our spare time. Like uh, we'd clean the causeway. Mm -hmm. At Annis's Island, we used to get a lot of driftwood down in front of it. Yeah. So we would help. We were deckhands on the tug, and we would clean the wood out of that, drop it through the hold so that uh, you know, it would be piled up for 100 feet in front of the causeway. Okay. And we had to find spots to get it through and get, get rid of it every day. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was our first towboating job. So went, what year was this around? That would have been around probably 1959. Yeah. 57, 58, 59 in that area. Did you go to Fraser River then too? Or that, is, that was, in that the was Fraser. on Fraser. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or, well, actually, it was in the slough there. Yeah. In Annis' slough. And then, uh, and then we would do other work on the tugs around uh, the Fraser, around Westminster. And, okay. And around the mills. Like years ago, there used to be probably uh, 20, 25 mills you know, cutting lumber. Yeah. I don't think there's hardly one left now. There's a few left, not many. Yeah. <laughs> so, then mills kept everybody pretty busy. You know. yeah, Where were we now? Can I actually just go back yep. and ask a question? Um, you mentioned like with the the um, fines that you got for not fish or for not having a license. What was the process to be like allowed we, versus not? We were not too allowed? young. Oh, okay. So you had to be 16 to get a license. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. And you Plus, just like went down to the fisheries office to get a license or? When we were 16. But yeah. that, when that happened we were 13, 14 years old. Yeah. <laughs> so we couldn't get one anyway. <laughs> okay. With who did you go like when you were like 14 or something? Ourselves. Okay. You know, we had been our friends, we were school friends of ours. Yeah. In Queen, from we Queensboro? All on, we all lived in the Fraser, yeah. Yeah. Like when you got out of school, you went down the river and played. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all the things went on around the river. We were swimming in the river. Yeah. And everything like that. You know, that's one thing. Like then, the river was pretty dirty, though. Yeah. Now it's way cleaner. <laughs> okay. It's, you know, before when you had 25 mills dumping stuff in there and mm -hmm. you had uh, sewer outfalls all over and things like that yeah. going in the river and everything. So. People think that the phrase is dirty. It's not dirty at all now. Yeah. You know, because there was lots of stuff from mills and 
and all kinds of stuff went in the river. They just dumped it in there. That was it. <laughs> yeah. Was the stuff that was in the river, was it ever like a problem when you were trying to do the fishing? Like, did it get in the way? No. Or? no. We had big runs then. Yeah. yeah. You know, didn't seem to make much difference to the run size. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. 1958 was a big, big uh, Adams, River, Adams River run mm -hmm. that came in that year. Yeah. That's the first year I had a boat on my own. And we were fishing in the Gulf at night, and I was going to school during the day. Yeah, <laughs> wow. When did you get your first, when when did you have your first own boat? 1958. 58, okay. And then you just continued Yeah, then fishing. I fished that for a few years, went broke. Were you by yourself on the boat, or you had friends helping you? Or? Uh, a friend of mine was with me some of the yeah. time. Yeah, but yeah. lots of times it was only, in them years, one guy on a boat. Yeah. You didn't. Now we seem to have more. Yeah. No, but uh, but down that one, you know, I fished for a few years. Then, uh, and the one boat at um, this other one, I we put a new mast on and different things. We went fishing halibut, top of Vancouver Island, mm -hmm. and then the mast was kind of heavy. So we thought, well, when we get in after that trip, we would cut the mast down lower short. We didn't quite make it. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I spend the night on the island. Uh -oh. <laughs> Me and my buddy. <laughs> so next morning my uncles come out, they picked us up, found us there. That's cool. Yeah. Nah, so Did you like cut the mast down yourself then? Like no, no, we didn't we got... didn't get in in time to yeah. do that. Because uh -huh. it was made in a shipyard made the mast, put it all on. Oh, okay, okay. But when we were fishing we realized it was too heavy. Yeah. Yeah. But then when we, we were gonna cut it down when we got in but we didn't make it. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. What kind of equipment did you have on the boats? Them day? Just gill netting. You know, yeah. we had the net. Mm -hmm. and not, not a lot of stuff. Pretty, there's no electronics or anything like that. Mm -hmm. No uh, hydraulic steering or anything like that. It was all manual. Yeah. And Just where would you like get that stuff from? Like, was there like at the shipyard or did uh, you make yeah. the nets or? It was, you know. Like the engines, there was East Oak engines around, you know, that were built in, uh, um, in Steveton and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Lots of them were around, and, you know, lots of gill netters had little six-cylinder uh, Chrysler engines, stuff. Yeah. Was the work dangerous? In them days? Yeah. Uh, well, you just, you know, you didn't take any extra chances because the equipment you had didn't yeah. allow you to. Yeah. But sometimes it was... A little scary because of the it started to blow in the Gulf or yeah. something, and they weren't that big boats. And if you yeah. got a lot of fish, they went down in the water mm -hmm. pretty good. So yeah, that's hard. Yeah, but then after that, of you know fishing, and then I went broke with the one boat. Then I got back into tow boating after that, back mm -hmm. in the Fraser, and okay, and tow boated there for another uh, almost ten years, I guess. Okay. and then so then I became captain on that. Yeah. After a few years, and I was running different tugs, and we mainly worked for like uh, valley towing and swiftsure towing, yeah, rib tow stuff like the companies like that that were around Westminster. Yeah, you just did like contract work for them. No, we we're by the you know hired on, and we got paid so much a day. Oh, okay. Okay. We used to call it day for day. Yeah. Okay. Day off, day days okay. pay, and you got a day off. But oh, okay. Usually we took the money and kept yeah. working. Yeah. <laughs> where did the where did you have the boats, like the, the tugs, tug boats? Where, they where were tied they? up on the Westminster waterfront, right above Patella Bridge. Oh, and right, right there. below Patella Bridge. Okay. Did that used to be a different company there then. Okay. It used to be Swiftsure Towing and Valley Towing were there, and Valley Towing's still there. Okay. It's above the Patella Bridge there, and Swiftsure that now is called Sea Link, I think, or something like that. Okay. Mm. My. Uh, Old boss there was Jack Bruno. He's quite a famous towboat guy, uh, yeah. Westminster and everything. And surprisingly, at the end, I ended up buying his yacht. <laughs> years later, yeah, not from him, but some other people had it then, and ended up buying it. And uh, they still got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, so. Yeah. So you you did you have your own port for the for the tugs? Like. Uh, yeah, Valley Tone had their own place. Okay. Uh, that weren't, I was just running a boat for them. Okay, okay. That time. So you and didn't own your own tug, you just... No. Yeah. No. Yeah. So then after then, 
you know, we used to tow mainly around the river from Point Grey up to Mission. Yep. Okay. And then, and then we used to like do a lot of tendering the barges to the ships yeah. in the harbor because we used to have like on the Westminster side, you'd have about uh, probably, I'm guessing around close to 10 ships would be tied up all the way around the harbor. Okay. And then all the longshoremen, you know, they'd have like, uh, I'm just guessing, probably like six to eight gangs a day yeah. working on them, you know. So you'd have like 80 gangs of people. Mm -hmm. There's probably like 20, 15, 20 guys in a gang that went on, on these ships. So you had yeah. a lot of people working, yeah. you know, right, right in town here. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you know, then they started moving them over to uh, Surrey. Yeah. And then the container dock was put up and things like that. So it would have been yeah. like in the 60s? Uh, then, yeah, that'd be around the 60s, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then actually, you know, it's more later than that, I guess, what would be probably in the 80s when they started shutting the mills down somewhere in there, maybe. Mm -hmm. But, you know, then that work, because it used to load a lot of lumber yeah. and yeah. that. And one of my jobs was afterwards that I had a gill letter. And then I'd be a lifeguard in the winter and yeah. different times of the year. Uh, besides fishing, like fishing was, a, was only on a couple months of the year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I'd go tender lifeboats to watch the guys working on the barges there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so they fell off, I'm supposed to pick them up. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So, How did you get that job? Actually, it was a friend of my dad's that he was the Fort, uh, hiring guy. Okay. The agent for all them boats. Yeah. And then the knew I had a boat and, and that and uh, so they asked if I wanted to do it and so that's when I got yeah. the job doing it. Did you pick up a lot of people or was it just Nobody. more a precautionary? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know of anybody that uh, ended up really picking up anybody. Yeah. And you'd think there should have been somebody that would have fallen off in that time but so I don't you, remember any. You, any. you work with your father too? Yeah, well when I was fishing, yeah. Yeah. And my dad worked for him for with him for quite a few years. How did your father start his he started, work here? My grandfather yeah. was a manager for a fish company. He used to okay. be called Nelson Brothers Fisheries. And What's that would that become part of BC Packers, mm -hmm. which oh, is now yeah. Canadian Fish. Oh yeah, that's no. true. So when he, he was a manager for that. Yeah. So it ended up then, my dad fished for him and my uncles, they had uh, Packers. Mm -hmm. that they used to go collecting the fish around the river and stuff like that. And my other uncle, he was a gill netter too. So okay. they kind of got it just started that way. And I think uh, my other grandfather, he was in the fishing industry as well. Did they fish in the Fraser? Uh, yeah, some. But yeah. then they fished out a halibut off the BC coast here. In okay. Well. So, but that was years before that. Yeah. What kind of relationships did you have with like other companies? Like you mentioned that the packers would come around. So in and I guess when you were fishing yourself, did we you would sell like, it to them, or how yeah. did that work? More or less, you started with somebody, and you didn't move too often. Mm -hmm. You know, like myself, because my relations were in with Nelson Brothers. I started there, but then afterwards, I moved to Canadian Fish, uh, just because I thought it was better there. <laughs> <laughs> then I was yeah. there. I was there with them for thirty years or more. After yeah. that, and uh, you didn't, you know, you had these different companies that they supplied you with nets and uh, you know any boat repairs or stuff that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And years ago, you used to have grub coupons and gas coupons, but you never had cash. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. They would, you know, if they went up up north to these uh, different fishing places, Yeah, they had company stores and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So when you went in there, as long as you had the grub uh, book with the yeah. coupons in it, they were stamped for so much value. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then you'd use that to, to get food. Oh, that's what I mean. And that, so they didn't trust us with the cash because they knew we'd go and spend it. <laughs> 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 so it was actually a good way to... Yeah. You know, Sure. And did you ever know where your fish ended up? Like, do you know, like, if it was going to Japan? Yeah. 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 Lots of nemedies, I think, went to England and yeah. places like that, France. And okay. Japan was kind of more later, you know, on when the freezer markets and all that yeah. started. Mm -hmm. But the, when we were starting, you know, when we started, it was a big deal. Everything was canned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or now hardly, not very much is canned now. Mm-hmm. 
there's one company on the like on the whole Fraser River here now. Yeah. There's no Camry left. Yeah. Okay. There used to be probably at least thirty anyway, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you go back, you know. When did in, that change? Well, it started the change probably in the uh, late in the for late forties. Yeah. It got smaller. I guess the uh, the bigger companies bought up the little smaller companies. Okay. And then after that, the uh, it just kept going that way. Yeah. That, uh, they amalgamated and different things like that, so you ended mm -hmm. up with less and less. So by uh, probably in the uh, mid sixties. 70s there was probably only about four or five major companies yeah now, that's a big now we change have, so. now we have one <laughs> yeah <laughs> we have one that's Patterson Canadian fish yeah. yeah and no cannery the only cannery is in Prince Rupert one cannery wow that's what's left oh that's in Prince Rupert now okay yeah um did you have any like conflicts uh, or any like uh, competition with the other river users? Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, in the, you're always in competition fishing. Yeah. You know, and uh, in the river, you know, we had ever so few. Maybe like a thousand boats in the river here. Yeah. You know, years back, when the, there was lots. You know, you were, you know, between, you know. Outside of Westminster alone, you'd have uh, 50 boats, 50 to 100 boats fishing outside of there. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Now that's reduced uh, to about probably one down, one third. Mm -hmm. There's one third left maybe now. Yeah. And not only that, it's uh, then they've uh, they don't open near as much. Mm -hmm. Hardly yeah. like in the river here now. There's mm -hmm. hardly any openings, and it's politics more than anything. <laughs> so, so most of the boats go out then. They don't yeah. fish in the river. A lot of them now they fish in Prince Rupert, okay. uh, the gill letters and things, and mm -hmm. up coast. And uh, you know, the, there's been a big, uh, you know, a period of where that there's been building, building of runs and everything, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's been popular not to be able. To keep fishing down, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. uh, all that, but now the runs are starting to get pretty big again, yeah. like this year here, we expect. Four years ago, yeah. I caught one million fish, one wow. million pounds, Wow. four years ago on this run, that's yeah. what I, I caught, yeah. a million, million pounds of fish. And that was on the river, or was no, that? BC Coast. Okay, yeah. But some in the river, yeah. and some in the, like outside in the Gulf here. Yeah. Yeah. Saining, not gill netting. Yeah. <laughs> What's the difference between saining and gill netting? Gill netting is you, you know, you have a net and just one guy and he picks the fish out of the net and oh, puts okay. them in the hole. Mm -hmm. Where in saining we set around and we scoop the net up and then we uh, draw we'll it back. Out. Okay. Till it's small and then you take the fish out and brail yeah. them out. Yeah. So you get quite a few more. But you yeah. know, saining you need you know about five guys. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you like? How did this this company start then? Like how did leader fishing? Yeah. Uh, after I finished tow boating, like I went broke gill netting before. It was hard to make a living then. Yeah. So we had a tow boat and fish. I still fished every year almost, but yeah. mainly just sometime in the summer a bit. Mm -hmm. Then a tow boat all winter, and then finally after that, tow boating for about ten years there. Then I uh, decided I'm going back fishing full time. So yeah. I got a uh, job with uh, an old skipper I had, like an inbroke on Halibut. Yeah. Was before, he was running a tuna boat, and so then he called me to uh, go with him. I asked him actually, he said, if you need somebody to go with you, I'll go with you and yeah. fish tuna that. So then, yeah. in the meantime, it got late into the season, and he thought it was too late, so he says, he says, if anything, you take the boat, he says, and uh, you, you run it. So that, yeah. So then I started running at the boat, the tuna boat. That year I fished tuna off the BC coast here. Mm -hmm. Then we ended up going down to San Diego really? that window, that winter. Okay. And then in the spring we went down to Costa Rica and we fished around Costa Rica. Okay. And then there wasn't that much money because we were one of the 
first boats to go down there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, they call it a jig boat. Anyway, we went down. There wasn't that much. And in the meantime, back here, the halibut prices went, got really good in, Can okay. in Canada and the United States. So we decided to hell on that. So we run all the way back, bring the boat up here. That was in June, I think it was. And then uh, switched over and went halibut in Alaska. So it was tuna when you went down the coast, like yep. San Diego. Yeah. Come back, bring the boat for halibut, and went to fish to Alaska for the rest of the year. So you, which, around which year was this when you went to San Diego and... And down there and back, uh, yeah. about 1971, uh, yeah. 71, somewhere in there. How many people were were you working with then, like the around? Boat? Yeah, how many people did you have two. there? Just two? <laughs> <laughs> two went two on tuna. Okay. But when we come back and rig for halibut, then yeah. there's five of us. Okay. okay. Yeah. So then we fished halibut in Alaska that year. Then the next year... That winter, I decided to build my own boat, mm -hmm. and then we started to build the uh, first Viking leader. Yeah, and uh, that was ready, and uh, wasn't ready until the summer of the next year, like. Yeah. And then we started packing, and then fished halibut with that for the next uh, oh, ten years or close to ten years. Was that a local company that built the boat for you then? Yeah, it was a fellow in, over in Nanaimo. Okay. And then we did lots of our work ourselves. Oh, okay. That's really the, cool. My partner there. Yeah. yeah. So, then, uh, then we're good years. We went fished out of, up in Alaska there, and the prices were good and everything worked yeah. out well. Mm -hmm. And I bought my next boat in 19, I think it was about probably uh, 79. Okay. And that, that I built uh, another boat that we could uh, do uh, salmon and black rod. Mm -hmm. And we started fishing with that. 1989, built new Viking Pride. Um, the Pacific Viking in 90. Okay. Yeah. What would you say is like the biggest difference between the new, like fishing now or in the later years versus the earlier years of your... Mm -hmm. Your company. From just when I started my own company till now? Yeah. Uh, the biggest thing is probably accumulation of licenses yep. and, and quota. That was things went from uh, when we first started, it was open fisheries, eh? Oh, okay. Yeah. And we just competed for, but then that determined your quota because it was, our quotas were based on what you'd previously caught. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it kind of, uh, gave us pretty good quotas. Yeah. And that, then after that we uh, you know, bought other quotas and added to it and uh, other salmon licenses and things like that. When mm -hmm. and things. What was the most difficult part of your job? Mine? Mm. Well, halibut and black cod were pretty hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're offshore. We used to fish, you know, in halibut. We'd be fishing in, uh, in Alaska. Yeah. And we could be in tough weather at times. And then in black cod, we'd be fishing mostly in the winter time. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And out to 200 miles offshore. Yeah. yeah. On the boat, you know, on the sea mounts and that offshore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, some nights could be pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what did you like the most about the work? About it? Yeah. When we had a full load heading in. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember in a, when we were fishing in Alaska. And yeah. So we'd be monitoring other guys' phone, you know, cell phones when they're talking. Mm -hmm. Or the trollers. And they'd say, Oh, here comes the Rockefellers again with another load. <laughs> 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 so we're doing pretty good then. Yeah. But Did you need any special like safety equipment and stuff then if you're 200 miles away from shore? No, we had our life rafts and things. And, yeah. uh, you know, we, had, uh, we actually have better things now, but the e perps, you know, that uh, positioner, they come out later and so they were uh, something good to have. Mm 
and uh, single side, you know, on the side band and radios that could reach a long way in mm -hmm. or better and things yeah. like that. Yeah. What about like clothing or just? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not much, you know, there's not such extreme changes on the coast. Yeah. Sometime in the middle of winter, if you get outflow winds out of the north, then it can get pretty cold. But, yeah. but nothing like in the Bering Sea or anything. Yeah. It's not like deadly as catch. <laughs> yeah, I've never actually seen So what would you wear? Just wool clothes, you know, yeah. rain gear. Yeah. And an uh, insulated jacket, you know, and things like that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. I'd like to ask about the Fraser River. When when did it like stop? When did people stop fishing so much on Fraser? When? Yeah. When mm. did that change happen? Like. I'm guessing around. Uh, I think years years back we used to fish five days a week. Yeah. You know, mon used to used to open Monday morning and close on Friday. Yeah. And uh, then it went to four day weeks, and then three, and then two, and then one. Yeah. You know, and that uh, that kind of happened in uh, you know, when that, probably in the seventies. It probably started. Yeah. Uh, cutting back, you know, in the fishing days and things, and then. Uh, And actually, some of the runs like now, yeah, this year they predict probably the Fraser to have the biggest run in a hundred years. Here. Wow. Well, it did. Yeah. Four years ago was one of the biggest runs it had mm -hmm. in a hundred years. Now yeah. you're gonna have another big run. Plus the pink salmon runs that are here now that, for the past half a dozen or more, mm -hmm. they've been over 50 million, mm -hmm. up to 50 million pinks a year. Well, maybe not 50, 30 million. Yeah. Lots. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So. Was the was the waterfront more like a place of work for you, or was it also a place of pleasure? Or no, it would be a pleasure too. Yeah. But we worked lots in them days. Yeah. You know, we like on towboats, probably worked, you know, like twenty eight days out of the month. <laughs> and, and yeah, that's a lot. Stuff like that, you know, when we were running tug and and that, so. Then later on, then we used to get like uh, they started with a week on and week off. Yeah, but that was later in the probably mid, I don't know, in the seventies or something like that. But, you and know. how long would a day be? Like, would you start at six in the morning, five, four, ten? Fishing or towboat? Either or, both. <laughs> well, fishing usually worked eighteen hours a day. Yeah, yeah. And towboat was probably not much different. Yeah. And then they come in afterwards with uh, sleep requirements mm -hmm. uh -huh. that you had to go and have one six hour continuous sleep in 12 hours and then another two hours sleep within 12 hours. So wow. you, you got your eight hours sleep a day you're supposed to have. <laughs> wow. How did, your, how did your father and your grandfather, how did they decide to come here for, yeah. Their father. <laughs> yeah. They're even, like my grandfather come from Norway. Yeah. My other grandfather and then that was their business was they uh they had like a farm and they and uh fish then a boat there. Yeah. And they'd go out fishing with a boat during the day and things like that. Or, and then they'd come in mm -hmm. and they'd unload the fish there. Yeah. And then the 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 women in the family they looked after drying it. Yeah. So they'd process it, the guys would in that, and then the women, they would uh, take it and hang it up for drying on the racks. Yep. And they'd make bacala, you know, that's famous in Italy. Yep. Used to have the bacala. So then they'd, they'd dry that, and I don't know how many days, it, they had drying racks out, on, out there and that. And in that was in, in the summer, I guess. Yeah, in Norway. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, then they had the animals, you know, on the farm, mm -hmm. so that they got, uh, meat in the winter and yeah. eggs and milk and all that stuff so they were kind of self-sufficient and then every so often then they went to 
in our case, I, we weren't living far from Olison. Yeah. And they would take the boatload of uh, dried fish and take it in there and sell it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And get paid for it. No. Where from Norway did they, did your grandfather come from? Uh, one come from Lofoten Islands. Okay. Yeah. Up in the north. Yeah. And the other one come from Batwe. Ah, uh, yeah. It was called Josek. Mm hmm. It was down uh, farther south, uh, how was it, south of Olison. Okay. And, uh, Oh, I said, yeah, another story. Part of it was now that I'm back fishing. Yeah. Of thing. So I ended up owning a surimi plant later in life here. Okay. So I ended up selling fish to Norway. Really? To the same island where my grandfather come from. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. And my aunt that I met there, when I went over there because we yeah. sold this fish to him because it was a made up fish pudding they had to have in the morning there. Mm -hmm. And that, so then we went over and uh, met him and that, and then I went met my aunt, she was a 90-something, and yeah. then she told me she had worked in that plant, in Canada, in that plant where they processed the fish pudding. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> we used incredible. to sell container loads of it. Yeah. 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 Not that many, some, but that was quite a coincidence. Oh, you know, for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. That later in life that happened. Yeah. How did you, um, so when you had the plant and you sold it back there, how did it get there? Like, was it? The fish plant I had? Yeah. No, oh, I had them here. Yeah, but then you you sold the yeah. stuff back to Norway. So was it like just a, any commercial ship would take it back, or did you have arrangements? How did how did you? Oh yeah, just on a shipping line. Yeah, mm -hmm. so and it, uh, you mentioned having like loyalties earlier with the other thing. Did you also have that same type of loyalties with shipping lines, or was it just whichever boat was in harbor it was going to go, or how yeah, did that no, work? no, we you know depending what shipping line we're shipping with, yeah. Hackback Lloyd or uh, Maersk or. Yeah. You know, the different ones, whichever ones went to that particular place. Okay. Usually, and so then we would. And what there. kind Probably. of year was it that, you, like, when about did you have that plant? Oh, that was later on than when we bought more boats. Uh, I bought, a, I bought that set up. That plant was in, uh, in Port Alberni. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, geez, I'm trying to think what year that would be. Probably in the 90s. So was there already containers then? Like it would just go into a container at the plant? We'd bring it in, yeah. process it through the plant, and uh, make it into fillets or surimi, yeah. mm -hmm. different products. Yeah. And then uh, ship it out, you know, freeze it, and then send it out in containers. Yeah, okay. So where... Where did you put it into uh, fillets and fillet? Well, when we brought it in, we had a free yeah. tunnel freezers, okay, and then we froze it there. And the, you know, they spread it out mm -hmm. and that, and then uh, and the, the serimi you ground it up. You know, just it's protein. Yeah. So then they make fish sticks out of it. You yeah. know, like oh, crab yeah. sticks and yeah. things like that. That's what they made out of it. Okay, and those were made in Port Alberni. Port Alberni. Okay. Yeah. Um, then I had another plant over in the uh, Delta. We used to do the flaying of the fish and fish products, you know, from mm -hmm. different yeah. places. And that would go to uh, mostly down the I 5, down on, uh, to LA and uh, places like that. They yeah. would uh, sell to uh, all the different stores. Yeah. That was mainly, mainly on the bottom fish and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Fillets yeah. of all different types, rockfish, yeah. halibut, cod, and different things. Yeah. Can we maybe go into uh, Queensborough a little? Like, mm -hmm. you mentioned that you you lived there, but were you born in Queensborough? Born in Westminster in the hospital there, and then yeah. lived there all, all my life, though, until I was I lived in Queensborough. I lived there until I was about. Uh, yeah, 18 years anyway. Yeah. Did uh, your grandfather came to Queensborough first? Or? He come from Norway and then settled in Queensborough and then bought a house and then my my mom and dad lived, we've all lived together in the same house there. Yeah. And that, and uh, lived there for, well, all of you, a lot of years there. 
my grandfather was probably there for 25 years or something like that or more. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Where in Queensboro? Was it right near, by the near where the mills were? No. Well, yeah, they were no, on the main road. Yeah. And up by where Queen Elizabeth School used to be. Yeah. It used to be close to that. Yeah. But up there was a mill only, you know, when you go over the Queensboro Bridge now, mm -hmm. you see the big, on your left when you're going over the bridge heading that way, you see all now the big um, container uh, storage yard there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's FedEx is there. Yeah. No, Canadian Tire. And all that, well, that used to be a big mill there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side of the bridge, there was another big mill. Mm -hmm. So they were all right around, you know, not far, a block away. Yeah. And then lots of people worked in there, you know, that from Queensboro there. Yeah. I don't know how many people would have taken the, to run the different mills that were around there. There was like maybe one, two, three, four, you know, five. Six mills, I think, just around Queensboro and yeah, and then the other side of the river, maybe, but all right in that location. Yeah, quite a few. How how was it? How was the everyday life like in Queensboro before? Mm. Well, lots of friends of mine went to work in the mills. Yeah, I even did myself a little bit, not much. You did? Yeah, where did you go? To one right where the where the Canadian uh, Shoe mills distribution or? center is there now, and that's the mill I was at. But I worked in the mill for two months there because they were they were building a new tug. Okay. And I was on there, so I had to go work in the mill for two uh, months. I see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wasn't much of a mill worker. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do in the mill? Worked like, what was the, your putting put logs into the mill? Okay. On the, on the water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, did you know any? Like, did you know other nor people who had family in Norway or Scandinavia oh, yeah. living in Queensboro? Yeah. There was quite a few different families that, you know, their relations had come from Norway. And some of our family relations lived there too, okay. cousins and things like that. And there was, you know, lots of different, uh, we used to call it the League of the United Nations, we used to call it down there because there were so many different nationalities and <laughs> our school, you know, classroom looked pretty, <laughs> you had everybody in there, <laughs> Chinese, Japanese, Hindu. You name it, was there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess the school rooms are like that now, too. Was there a lot of interaction between everybody, or did you find there was like, kind of like little no, groups? We all, we all got, no, no, we all got along. Yeah. And uh, I think later in life, then it got to be more groups. Yeah. Yeah, but when we were all younger, it didn't matter much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you know most people in Queensboro? Yeah, a lot, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, usually you almost knew everybody because they, you know, they lived there for a lot of years, most of them. Yeah. So between, at least within the, the nearest six or eight blocks. You yeah. Know, something like that. Yeah. What kind of a house did you live in Queensboro? Yeah, uh, it wasn't that big. Was it wood framed? Or? Wood framed, yeah, two story. Yeah. And, uh, and grandparents were upstairs and what we were downstairs. Yeah. And half and half probably more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> half the time we'd be up with my grandparents. And yeah. And that. And uh, actually like Alan. Yeah. I didn't know that uh, that uh, the guy, one of my partners now I have a shipyard up in yeah. Hammond. Eh? And uh, anyway he did uh, there was something I had a Alan you know, had to get a hold of him in that. So anyway, they they got it talking, and here it ended up here that uh, same name as mine, my partner is Ernie, yeah. Ernie Silty, though, that he ended up coming from Norway with Alan's dad. And they really? lived down on Wood Street together. <laughs> yeah, small, <laughs> world, small world. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, so there was, and then he, they ended up working in the shipyard. Yeah. That used to be, they were just tearing it down now. Star mm -hmm. Shipyard. Okay. It used to be originally called Mercer Shipyard. Mercer Shipyard, and then it was Star Shipyard, and then it was Progressive Shipyard, and at the end I think it was Fraser Shipyard. And that, yeah. But they're just tearing it down now, getting ready to put condos in. <laughs> yeah. So that shipyard had probably been there for, I'll bet you'd been there for close to 100 years. Yeah. Something like that. 
How do you, what do you think about the change? Well, if you think we all got to get used to change or we're in trouble, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was quite a change, you know, like what I see on the river is that there's, the river used to be lined with different businesses, everything like from, uh, you know, from wood sawmills to shipyards to loading ships to all these different things. And now there's not much of that left. There's, you know, there's no more hard, very few shipyards. Yeah. And the, uh, you know, you've got container dock now, so it's totally different that way compared to loading ships the way it used to be. And uh, the other areas where there was fishermen, you know, they had their net racks all down the river and all that. Well, that's all gone now. Mm -hmm. and they're cleaned out. <laughs> and, uh, but there's, it's more containers and more, uh, you know, everything's containers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, even like the uh, stuff going to Vancouver Island and back on the ferry, you know, on the uh, rail car barges and stuff like that. Did that change the way that you worked, the containers? Yeah, I would think quite a way, you know, quite a bit in a way that uh, before you loaded lots of the lumber and different things right on the ships. Mm -hmm. And now that's kind of all in containers, I think, and mm -hmm. things like that. And it's uh, more big business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before it seemed smaller. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, uh, Did that change Greensboro as well? The biggest thing that changed there, I think, was the fact that the mills all disappeared mm -hmm. and everything went to uh, housing. And uh, same with the shipyards are gone mm -hmm. and the mills are gone. The, uh, you know, it's more real estate. And, yeah. And uh, just homes. A lot of the businesses are gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you used to fish in Queensboro? Like for fun or for? Sports fish? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> that little bit, yeah. But yeah. Not much. It's, uh -huh. uh, you know, fishing in the ditches with it. Yeah. <laughs> to get to the, with a can. <laughs> stuff like that when we were about six, seven years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, do you think like somehow the industrial past can be seen in Queensboro today? Can it be seen? Yeah. I don't know quite what you mean there. But like do you think it, there's something that's left that can be linked to the history? It's just like well, it's just a completely different place. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm trying to think of different things that, were, you know, the shipyards were before, but they're all gone now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like you got all, you know, you got casinos and yeah, and WalMarts and <laughs> you got all them things and uh, Annis's Island seems to have some business. Yeah. You know that was like. When they started, that was Grosvenor Lang, I think it was called, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it started out pretty small, but now that whole island is nothing but total business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's probably where most of the things moved from Queensboro. Yeah. And went to there, because that, you know, Queensboro become more housing and everything like that, and then the business part mm -hmm. went more on Ennis' Island, and they finally yeah. filled that up in the last 10 years. There's no more room, I don't think. Yeah. Not much, anyway. You mentioned earlier, um, you said about like the, the river is actually a lot cleaner now. Mm -hmm. If you were looking at Queensboro, would you say that like the community is better now or was it better back when they, they had all of the mills and everything? Um, financially, you mean, or living-wise? Yeah, just like living-wise, like... I don't know, it's probably better. I think everything's gotten better over time. Yeah. You know, the houses like where I live right now, it's pretty expensive to live there. Yeah. Where before it was only some shacky things around there. Yeah. yeah. Years ago, you fought to get off the river mm -hmm. because you didn't want to live on the dike. Yeah. Yeah. That was the place that was. Now we're all trying to get back on the river, on the dike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, 
you know, everybody wants to live right next to the mm -hmm. water. So that's one of the big things that are changing. It is that people wanting to live next to the water has changed the whole lifestyle of the businesses. Now we're having to move inland or to other places. They can't afford to stay on the water. Mm -hmm. For instance, a good part of that is showing that in Steveton now, they just developed a whole new section uh, on a group there, and they put and the, we, they, they got the okay to go ahead and build it as long as they kept some of it as commercial mm -hmm. for fishing. Well, it's bloody expensive. No commercial business would yeah. go in there. Yeah. Some of my friends that have insurance business can't even afford to go in because it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so that's going to end up all condos. Yeah. And then they might end up with some restaurants and things on the bottom, but mm -hmm. I don't think you have any commercial businesses because they can't afford to even be there. Mm -hmm. you know, it was just a way to get the property develop, yeah. development to go ahead. But that's where the Imperial Cannery used to be. The yeah. biggest cannery in Steveton. Yeah. It used to employ it was five, six, five to 6,000 people in that cannery. Wow, that's all right. When do you think that changed? Well, I don't remember when that all was, but in the 80s, I think it changed. Yeah. You know, that's when, I think it was the 80s or 90s, they sold out to the Canadian Fish and, you know, the, just, uh, what do you call it, amalgamation, what do you call that, in other words? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> did you, you know. did you like living in Queensboro when you were growing up? Yeah, it was, you know, I think as a young person, I was yeah. fine. We, uh, we enjoyed running around doing things that we did there. And, mm -hmm. You know, but as we, then we got older, then it was, oh, well, mm -hmm. make more money and get a better house and things like that and move yeah. to a more affluent area. So that's what happened. <laughs> then I moved to Delta. <laughs> Yeah. Over the over the Fraser. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Were there differences between Queensboro and New West, or was it all kind of the same? New West was more affluent. Yeah. No, not. I went to school in New West, high school. Yeah. Okay. Which we used to bus and stuff to the. Okay. To junior high and senior high there. So you went to Queen Elizabeth, then then you went to New West after. Yeah. Junior high and senior high there. Okay. When you went. I think they're ready to tear it down now. Really? Yeah, it looks pretty decrepit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's two blocks up the road there. <laughs> okay, I didn't know. Yeah, you know, eighth and tenth. You can oh, see okay. the high schools there. Yeah. Yeah. Both of them are still there. I don't know. I don't think they're boarded up now. Yeah. No, but then they say the population, of young people, is dropping. So yeah. You probably don't need them. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, did you, when you used to live in Queensboro, did you go to New West often to do cross the bridge? Oh yeah. Yeah, the old bridge, you never had the, the bridge there now, you yeah. had the train bridge. Yeah. And that's when we used to, half the time I think you had to wait. The cars would go one way and then the cars would go the other way. And yeah. And that. I remember one time I was uh, in my buddy, we ended up playing hooky from school and we bought a skiff. And then we, uh, off of Blackie the Trapper down there. And then... Uh, so then we started rolling that skiff around the island to get back to where we were. Like we had to come up around under the bridge. And yeah. Anyway, then we're rowing away, and then finally I got home. Geez, it was eight o'clock at night. I was tired <laughs> to be. Got that skiff around there, and my dad said, "How was school?" Oh yeah, good. He said, "Well, how, how come you were rowing the goddamn boat <laughs> under that bridge when I went over it, and he was on the bus?" <laughs> 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 yeah, so I didn't get away with that one. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. That was a bridge that it's the only one that you had to get off the island at, yeah. at least on the Queensboro side. Yeah. And then the train, if the train come, well that was it, you had to wait because the train had to go across first. Yeah. Then the cars could go over. Yeah. yeah. We have heard stories that people were late from work because they had to wait for the oh, yeah. yeah. The train there, yeah. I don't know how many times that bloody train would. I remember growing up, and then the next thing you'd hear the horn, wee, wee, and then my dad running, oh, geez, they're going to get the car out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
we'd be parked on the railroad track in front of the house. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Do you remember when they opened the Queensboro Bridge? The new one? Yeah, uh, in the 60s. 60, 60 not the ceremonies, really, but... Yeah. Huh. I was thinking of the time though when we were younger, and uh, so we'd always go to Westminster to, yeah, hot dogs or whatever up here. Yeah. Ride around town, you know, show off or whatever, and then <laughs> finally then the police guy, and he says, uh, God says, you get the hell home, because I guess he knew we had some beer or something. <laughs> and then he says, like, first he says, you got two bits? Mm -hmm. And I says, yeah. And he says, well, get the hell out down to the bridge and pay your toll and get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Chase is home. <laughs> was there a toll on the train bridge, too? No, not that, on the train, yeah, just the new just one. Just the new one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I remember, it was two bits each way, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, How did you feel about, was there a difference in between the people who were living in Queensboro and the people living in mainland? Did you have friends on both sides of the oh, river? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. But, you know, you didn't travel very much, that much. Yeah. You didn't. Once in a while. Yeah. yeah. I remember I walked to see my grandmother. Across the Teller Bridge. Oh, wow. <laughs> Over the south of Miserable. And we were pretty young. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. How do you, like, how do you see the future if you think about the future in fishing? Fishing? And, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of more specialized now, I think, to a point where, but if you're, uh, the opportunities I think are going to be there. Yeah. The fish will be there. But the, uh, you know, it's like other countries have a hard time getting fishermen. Yeah. Because their, the newer lifestyle is not geared to fishing too much. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of love it to be able to want to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like in other countries, I've noticed that the better jobs, like, well, you know, like with, uh, in pilotage, say, and mm -hmm. tow boating and different jobs where people are, the local people get them jobs, and then pretty soon there's not enough uh, ordinary people to go fishing. Yeah. Because there's not enough trained for it and want to do that job. Yeah. And in other countries, like, you have to bring in port workers yeah. from other countries to, as deckhands and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Like in Norway, a lot of people are imported from mm -hmm. other parts of Europe. Yeah to do the uh, deckhand jobs and then the yeah. Coast Guard then, you know, the young people of Norway, they go and become Coast Guard uh, mm -hmm. employees or ocean, you know, with the yeah. oil business and all yeah. that kind of business they go to because that's where all the money is. Yeah. And the government jobs that are available, they take mm -hmm. really well in them, yeah. government boats and things like that. So, but I think there will be a shortage of people mm -hmm. to, uh, Fill all the marine jobs that are available. Yeah. The good marine jobs that are available, let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, yeah if, still, if I can ask about Queensboro, mm -hmm. and do you see something positive or negative, negative about the redevelopment there? Because you mentioned that it's all housing now, and mm. how do you feel about the change? Well, it's just a fact of life. That's what happens. But I yeah. don't, know what, don't know what you can do to stop it. Yeah. Uh, that's just what the general population want. Yeah. And it's these yeah. other people go to like, go downtown to Vancouver to work or whatever, or they go out to you know industrial sites areas to work more and things like that. It's I don't know if uh, not as you know, it's, I don't know which is better. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. it's a uh, mixed, mixed would be better. I don't know if it is or not. You yeah. get more noise, you get more everything. Mm -hmm. Things like that. that uh, I know when the sawmills were running, there were lots of noise to come up. Mm -hmm. So if you lived around there, you were happy to see them gone probably. <laughs> yeah. But if you worked in it, then you weren't too happy to <laughs> see them gone. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned that you moved off off the island. Um, do you know still people that still live there? Oh yeah. 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 So you spend yeah. a fair bit of time there? Or? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well I'm more in Steveton now.
because yeah. that's where my business is. Yeah. yeah. But I get up the other one once in a while where Do I used to live. I still have friends there. Do you get really nostalgic when you go back and remember mm -hmm. where things were and what? Or is it? Yeah, a bit. Yeah. But it's uh, less going on. Yeah. Businesses are gone. And just a few friends that I have there, they retire now. <laughs> is there anything that when you're there, you, you feel like future generations, like it should be preserved for future generations? I don't know what's left to preserve. Yeah. You know, there's uh, very little that's really left of what the old way used to be. You know, it's, uh, I mean, it's a way of life that's gone. Yeah. <laughs> The mothers wouldn't let their kids do that nowadays. Yeah. You know, if a mother said, oh, you can go down the river and play today, go ahead. <laughs> They'd think she was crazy. <laughs> but yeah. that's the way it was then. Mm -hmm. You know, as young guys, that's, most of us all did the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can get the protection that the kids get nowadays uh -huh. by the mothers, you know. Yeah. When we take them to go to work, the Christ, they think we're trying to kill them. <laughs> Just to get them used to doing do a little bit of work. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's like this new community plan for Queensboro and it's all about saying how Queensboro is unique and distinctive. Uh, what, do you, what do you think that they mean when they say it's unique? It used to be unique. Yeah. It would be more like it probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's unique now. Yeah. <coughs> well, you got a lot of mixed cultures, I guess, there. Same as we used to have, I would think. Yeah. You know, it used to be, I don't know if it was more pronounced before or what, but in a way everybody had their traditional things to do and all that, you know, the Italians played bocce and everything, and, and uh, you know, we had the East Indian food, and then we had uh, you know, Norwegian dinners and stuff like that. And it was quite it was a little more distinct, each group of yeah. uh, having different Beatles going on. So. Yeah. <laughs> but. Did you do different things? Did you go to Roma Hall or did you go to. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, we dances on there, or weddings that were on yeah. there, and then they'd be there. And down the temple, down the Eastern Indian Temple there. And yeah. And uh, where, else, where else did you go? Cool Hall. Oh, yeah, you have the Taka Hall and these other halls, you know, that we used to have dances at and different functions. Yeah. They had about three of them, I think, three different halls. Mm -hmm. the Rome Hall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's pretty well laid, I think. Yeah. Mm. Did most of the people who lived in Queensboro worked? You mentioned that they all worked in the mills almost. But were no, they? No, no, they were okay. mixed. A lot of different jobs. There was shipyards, mills, fishing, co voting, uh, loggers. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was a whole variety of people. That, you know, machinists and different things. Yeah. Different jobs. There was a mixture of everything. Mm -hmm. and some of my friends they end up being machinists or in running for working for C SPAN and things like that. And yeah. Different. But lots expanded. You know, a lot of people come out of there and end up. My other friend, he ended up running the sea bus. Mm -hmm. He was the chief shore sh shore engineer for the sea bus field and stuff like that. Okay. My other buddy, he became chief engineer on the Spirit of BC. Mm -hmm. You know, to us and running the ferry there and stuff like that. And yeah. So lots of people come from there. Ended up with good jobs. Yeah. yeah. Alan, he became the harbor master. Yeah. That, yeah, you have this one. With their rough upbringing or whatever, I think you come out of there not too bad, really, most a lot of us. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's very true. Are you still friends with the people you grew up in Greensboro? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quite a few. That's awesome. The ones that are left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting pretty old now. <laughs> yeah, because. Mm -hmm. um, I'm mm. checking if there's anything yeah. I wanted to jump back to or if I... Yeah. 
um, it seems like they were so like Queensboro was so different from what it is now and yeah. yeah. Not even Westminster here. You know, like the waterfront is so much different because you have now you got uh, the key. You got all the condos all the way up there. And yeah. Mm -hmm. The other part, it's just like they didn't know what to do with it for ten or fifteen years. <laughs> kind of sat there. Yeah. I, you know. How those changes affected the way that you work and the way that you are interacting with the waterfront? Well, you know, if you go. You know, when we first started, it was that mm -hmm. was our main work was all to do with that work on the waterfront, and uh, you know, the shifting of barges and the, uh, you know untying of ships and tying up of ships and you know different things like that. And, uh, mm -hmm. All the longshoremen that you know had their haul right down here. And every day there were so many went out of there, and, and a lot of that business went and into the community, that's where everybody down there shopping, it was in town and then you didn't have no big malls or anything like mm -hmm. that around the Columbia Street was the main deal to go and get you went to cop shoe store to get your yeah. shoes and that was it. Yeah. The big deal was when they <laughs> built Woodward's the next door here. Yeah. Later, you know, that was a big big deal then. Yeah. My aunt worked in there for thirty years, I think. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh okay. That's cool. yeah. My sister worked in there. But if you yeah. Did you have most of your living, your family living in <coughs> near Wester, Queensboro? Queensboro? Yeah. And then after that, my sister. Yeah, and then moved to Delta too. Yeah. yeah. When you guys moved to Delta, did like your. Because you were doing the tugboats then, or were you. You had your own fleet by then? Tugboats. Oh, okay. So and then that Gil didn't change. And Gilman. Yeah. 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 So, so I built when that, you I had built that on a towboat. Yeah. <laughs> My first house. <laughs> yeah. When you had your own boats, that was based out of Delta, then? or did you did you more? My first in? ones. Um, after the tugboating, so your first ones. Yeah. No. And then once they, been? we were yeah in Delta. Yeah. We tied up over there. Yeah. And in Stephen. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And we did stuff. You know, at the shipyards okay. in Queensboro, yep. the Richmond top of and like Nelson Brothers shipyard was the top of Richmond there. Yeah, they used to do lots of work there on the different our boats and stuff. And, and, uh, yeah, that was you know then then shipyards alone employed quite a few people when you think about that. There was about like one, two, three. There's four or five shipyards. What kind of work happened in the shipyards? Is that like the loading? Build, build boats Building. right from scratch. Yeah, okay. Build wood boats, steel boats, yeah. aluminum boats. You know, lots of that. Going on. You mentioned the uh, Star Shipyard, but what were the uh, other ones? Yeah, there was uh, Star Shipyard, there was Sather Shipyard. Yeah. And uh, Honor Shipyard. Shore shipyard, shore, shores. Yeah. And uh, Nelson Brothers shipyard. And uh, I'm missing a few here now. There's still more. Mm -hmm. Them were the main ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Do you, do you have Christy something to? No, I think that, yeah. Unless there's any particular stories that you were hoping we would ask you about that you wanted to share? Mm. No, not that I know about that. Okay, I'm going to... Maybe when we do it up, you can let me look at it and I might, I might remember a few things. <laughs> yeah.